Hello. In this video, we're going to see how to put together all the data that we've prepared so far and combine it into a single project that will take images from the HMC and fit a mesh to every image. This project is going to be the central part of the 4D processing pipeline. In order to fit a mesh to every image, we are going to use a new node called Image Facial Wrapping. What we need to do is to plug in all of these inputs. So the first input is going to be our neutral fax expression. Let me bring my neutral mesh here. And also let me bring here a corresponding neutral texture. All right. As you may see, this texture does not contain facial markers because we intentionally clean them up on the neutral and all the fax expressions. In practice, you don't have to do that and may leave the markers as they won't affect the wrapping quality much. Now we need to translate this neutral mesh from the fax space into the camera space. To do that, I'm going to create a load transform node and I'm going to import the transformation from the face to HMC alignment step. Let's rename this node to fax to HMC. All right. Let's plug this mesh into the first input of the image facial wrapping node. The second input is going to be the set of facial markers that we selected on the labeling markers step. Let's load them using a load points node. This set of markers should be the same as the one that was used on the day of the HMC recording. As I mentioned before, if the photogrammetry scans were captured on the day of HMC shooting, you can use the markers from the neutral fax. If the photogrammetry scanning happened on a different day and thus had different marker locations, you need to capture a daily scan before or after the HMC recording. Then you need to wrap your neutral fax expression onto the daily scan as consistently as possible and then select the markers on the wrap mesh. So. Let's plug the markers into the second input of the Image Facial Wrapping node. The next input is called Excluded Floating Polygons. For this input, we need to select all the polygons on the face that are not directly visible from the camera. The method won't try to match these polygons against the camera images. A simple approach to do that is to create a Vertex Mask node. In the Vertex Mask node, let's increase the intensity to 100. Let's set the fall off to 100. Let's activate the topological symmetry and turn on the use geodesic distance option. So now let's start with the forehead selection. We need to roughly match the visible area of the forehead in the helmet. Then let's go to the side of the face and also select the border of the area that we assume is going to be visible. Now we can increase the radius and select everything inside the border. OK, now let's use polygroups to exclude some parts of the mesh from the selection. I'm going to exclude the mouth socket polygons, the eye socket polygons, and the car uncle. Let's click Subtract. With this done, we need to convert the vertex mask into a polygon selection. We can do that by using a vertex masked polygon selection node. Since we need to select the polygons that are excluded from the image fitting process, we need to invert our selection. All right, let's plug the selection into the third input of the image facial wrapping node. The next input is going to be the set of cameras that we calibrated on the stereo camera calibration step. To load them, let me create a load camera node. I'm going to switch to the checkerboard folder, camera calibration, and select the top camera file. Let me also rename the node to top camera. Our HMC cameras have optical distortion, so we need to undistort them before feeding them into the image facial wrapping node. To do that, I'm going to use an undistort camera node. As a rule of thumb, any camera or image related data should be undistorted before plugging it into an image facial wrapping node. Now let's load the bottom camera. I'm going to duplicate these two nodes and rename the loading node to 
bottom camera. I'm also going to replace the file name with bottom. Now we can plug the bottom camera into the image facial wrapping node. The next input is going to be the image sequences from the cameras. I'm going to drag and drop the image from the top camera sequence into the graph editor. Let's rename this node to top camera image. Next, let's undistort it using an undistort image node. The first input is going to be the camera image. The second input is the original camera. Here you can see the effect of the image undistortion. Let's duplicate these two nodes and rename the top one to bottom camera image. In the file name parameter, I'm going to change the folder name to bottom. Now let's select these two nodes and plug them into the next input of the image facial wrapping node. Make sure that the cameras and the images are plugged in the same order. All right, the next input is going to be the result of the mark tracking that we made in track previously. To load it, I'm going to use a load screen points node. I'm going to switch to the tracking folder and load the files corresponding to the top camera. Let's rename the node to top markers. Again, since the markers were tracked on the camera images that have optical distortion, we need to undistort them. I'm going to use an undistort screen points node. Let's plug the trap markers in as the first input and the top camera as the second one. Now let's duplicate the nodes and rename the loading node to bottom markers. In the file name, I'm going to change the folder to bottom. As the second input of the undistortion node, I'm going to plug in the bottom camera. Let me select these two nodes and plug them into image facial wrapping. The next input is going to be the facial annotation that we created in one of the previous steps. Let's create a load facial annotation node. Let me plug it into the next input of the image facial wrapping. The next input is going to be the result of the lip and eyelid contour detection that we made previously in track. We can load it by using a load facial detection node. The lip and eyelid contours were detected on the original images from the HMC, so they also need to be undistorted. To do that, let's use an undistort facial detection node. I'm going to plug the facial detection into the first input and the original top camera into the second one. Now we can plug the undistorted results into the image facial wrapping node. The rest of the inputs are four vertex masks. The first one is called stabilization mask. Let's go ahead and create a vertex mask node. I'm going to plug in the neutral mesh here. And I'm going to rename this node to stabilization mask. Let's increase the intensity to 100 enable topological symmetry, and turn on the geodesic distance option. During the performance, an actor may shake their head, and since the helmet is not perfectly fixed, it may shake relative to the actor's face, consequently leading to a shaky reconstructed sequence. The node uses an example-based stabilization method that looks at a set of pre-stabilized fax expressions to understand how to stabilize a given frame. For the stabilization mask, we normally use a visible area of the forehead. Make sure not to paint it too high so it's below the edge of the helmet. Also, don't paint it too low as it shouldn't cover the eyebrows. The second very important part is the nose bridge. All right, now we can plug this mask into the next input of the image facial wrapping node. The next vertex mask is called the sampling mask. Let's copy the existing vertex mask. Let me plug in the neutral mesh as an input. And rename it to sampling mask. I'm going to clear the selection. 
In the areas where the sampling mask has maximum intensity, the wrapping deformer is going to be more precise in capturing small-scale deformations, but it's also going to be less robust. The areas outside the sampling mask can only reproduce large-scale deformations, but they are more robust to noise and lighting. For nicely visible areas, the sampling should be high, and we should use 100% brush intensity. For side areas that are not well lit with the HMC light, we need to use lower sampling to prevent noise and artifacts. I'm going to hold the shift key and smooth the borders of my selection to create a nice transition between the areas with high and low sampling density. Now we can plug this mask into the next input of the image facial wrapping node. The next input is called the Uncertainty Mask. I'm going to duplicate the existing Vertex Mask node and rename it to Uncertainty Mask. The simplest way to create this mask is to invert the sampling mask. The Uncertainty Mask defines which parts of the mesh are not clearly visible from the cameras, so instead of fitting them to the image, we try to predict them based on nicely visible areas. The prediction is based on the set of facts expressions that we will provide later. Now we can plug this uncertainty mask into the image facial wrapping node. The last input is called fixed mask. Let me duplicate one of the existing masks again and rename it to fixed mask. Let's clear the selection. The fixed mask indicates which parts of the head should remain fixed during the fitting process. For example, let me select the back of the head. And I'm also going to select the very bottom of the neck. These areas will remain unchanged during the fitting process. As a side effect, it helps to get more robust results for the areas that are not directly visible from the cameras, like the neck, ears and sides of the face. Let's plug it into the image facial wrapping node. We've almost finished with the node setup. All that's left is to set the parameters. First, let's specify the neutral facts expression. Then, let's specify a set of other facts expressions. Please note that all the facts expressions should be stabilized to the neutral one. As I mentioned before, the image facial wrapping node uses a set of training facts expressions for several reasons to stabilize the head to predict the shape of occluded areas, and to predict the facial texture. Text prediction and lighting prediction are very powerful tools that increase the quality of the fitting. The face appearance changes during the performance. Some wrinkles may show up in some frames and disappear in others. By predicting the light and the wrinkles depending on the shape of the face, we can more accurately match it with the real image. In order to use this prediction method, let's go to the Texture tab. Here we can see that the Illumination Simulation and Dynamic Texture options are already turned on by default. What we need to do is to provide file names for our training meshes and corresponding textures. Let's go ahead and select a Neutral Facts Expression. Here we need to provide a corresponding neutral texture. Then we need to select a set of Facts Shapes. Then let's provide a corresponding set of textures for these fax shapes. It will take some time to load all the textures and shapes into memory. Please note that the node parameters are optimized for meshes with a centimeter scale. If your models have a different scale, you need to adjust these parameters accordingly. Otherwise, the node may produce artifacts and bad results. In practice, when working with this pipeline, the easiest approach is to use all the models at a centimetre scale. Also note that some parameters are optimised for meshes around 20 to 30,000 vertices. 
currently we use the mesh with roughly 30,000 vertices. Be aware that if you use a different mesh density, it will lead to a different behavior of the method. So I suggest choosing a subdivision level of the mesh around these numbers. You will be able to increase the mesh density during the later steps of the processing. So if we did everything correctly, and if we now go to the Visual Editor tab, we may see all the data that we loaded here. Now we can click the Compute button. Note that the first time when you start the computation, the node is going to cache some data. So the first run of the node is going to be slower than the subsequent computations. On my machine, it's going to take three to six minutes depending on the parameters. So let me pause the video and come back to you when everything is complete. Okay, now we can see the result of the fitting. So here you can see the model with dynamic texture and no lighting. And here you can see the computed dynamic lighting and the shaded mesh. Here we can switch between the neutral expression and the wrapped expression. We can also check the accuracy of the fitting. Now if you go to the 3D viewport, we can see the wrap model. Let me hide the grid for a moment. Here you can see the neutral mesh, and here is the result of the wrapping. All right, now let's go ahead and select one more example. I'm going to try this frame. Let's click Compute. I'm going to skip this part of the video and come back to you when it's complete. Okay, let's check the quality of the fitting. Let's also go to the 3D viewport and see how it works. And now let's try another extreme expression. We can try this expression. Let's go ahead and compute this one. Okay, let's check the quality of the fitting here. And here is how it looks in 3D. Let me show you a final example, which is going to be this one. Let's pick this expression and try to process it. All right. Again, let's check the quality of the fitting. And then let's also take a look at the model in the 3D viewport. Okay. The result of the image facial wrapping node is located in the HMC space. Before saving it as a file, I would like to transform the head back into the fax space. To do that, I'm going to copy this transform, turn on the inverted option, and rename it to HMC to fax. Let me plug in the result of the image facial wrapping node. With this done, Let's create a Save Vertices node to store our results. Let me create a folder called Wrapping. Let's set the file name to frame4hashes.ply. Now we can click the Compute Frame Range button. The computation of the image facial wrapping node is very resource consuming so I don't recommend running more than two processors on a single machine. If we process the entire sequence or run the computation on a farm, we will get a result like this. In the next step of the processing, I'm going to show you how to stabilize the head, predict the shape of the unseen parts like the neck and the ears, increase the resolution of the mesh, track the eyes, and predict the teeth position in every frame. That's it for this tutorial. See you in the next videos.